actually also like to ask Derek if he would answer that same question. Thanks. Um, kind of just got dropped on me all of a sudden. Um, I'm a, I'm a three-star diamond coach, and Kim is a diamond coach as well, so we have the same kind of thing going on. But for a couple of years, we have butted heads about this because, you know, we have a system in place, and I'm very chlor uh, choleric, and, and so I'm like, just do it this way. Like, that's the way you do it. Why are you doing it differently? And it really took my brother-in-law stepping up and saying, you guys need to open your eyes to each other's strengths and weaknesses, find out what works for you and what works for her, because it's not the same, and it's not your business and her business have to be the exact same. They don't have to be the exact same. It's your couple's business together. And like they've all said, like um, Neil and Christina said, you know, find out what works best for one person and the other person, and then support each other. Um, you know, and, and as Janelle said, you know, maybe your spouse is not 100% on board with it, but if they have that support, um, that's vital as well. If you have somebody who's a saboteur at home who's going to, you know, cut your business out from under you or anything, you, you really just need to tell them, hey, all I need is your support. I don't need you to be 100% in this business with me. I don't need you to do it exactly like I do or anything like that. I just need you to support me on that. So that's what, even if you've got two coaches in the same house, if one's not on the same level as the other, just ask for their support. Ask them to be supportive and help you along with it. And as Craig has taught so many people, your birth date and your start date are not always the same, and that might be the same for your spouse. You know, They may be a coach just to support you for two years, but then all of a sudden something happens and they go, hey, I'm really ready to get up off the bench and get in the game. You know, so be open and ask for that support. Um, and, and if you are working, as I said, together, sit down and really talk about it. There's a, another great book that um, I had suggested to me. It's called The Success Principles. And one of the things it teaches is called a heart talk. And you sit down and you talk to each other. And whoever has, you can use any kind of a prop, but whatever the prop is, Whoever has that prop, the other person has to listen. They're not allowed to speak until that, you know, the other person gets, the person with the prop gets done speaking. Get all of the things out that need to be said without any kind of emotional back and forth and figure out what your priorities are, where you guys both want your businesses to go so that you're both on the same team and the same timeline and everything else. Shalene Johnson talks about that too. She talks about making sure that your spouse knows what your priorities in your life are. Because you might think that your spouse understands and knows that, that, you know, I mean, this is the person you live with, this is the person you've been with. You know, you can say anything in the world to this person. That's what being a spouse is. But you also have to understand that anything that you say to them is taken more to heart than what anybody else says. So you need to be on the same page with this stuff. Be open about your goals. Be open about how you're doing this, understand that it's not always going to be done the same, and work together on that to build with your strengths and weaknesses. Great advice, guys. Okay, so this is... Whenever doesn't get answered here today, we can post them on our page and continue the discussion there and have people kind of join in on conversation. That's a great idea. Okay. So, the last question. <laughs> Would any of you have input for someone in their early 20s who often finds that their passion and energy for this business is perceived as a little overzealous or naive by older friends, coworkers, family, um, and how could they relate to these people more effectively? First of all, if you're in your 20s and you're in this business, congratulations. That is awesome. You are light years, light years beyond your peers. So congratulations to you. And I can tell you that even when you're in your 30s and 40s, uh, people are still going to perceive you in this business as overzealous. And, oh, there she goes. Here she comes. Or here, here he comes. That, you know, crazy P90X or some network marketing scheme. So know that you're, um, you're not, that's, that's sort of the personality. 
Um, that's not unusual for people to perceive that. And you just want to turn that zealousness. And, I mean, you want to be bold. You want to make a statement. And there's going to be people who are going to be attracted to you because of your boldness and your statement. So my advice to you is continue to be bold. Um, you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to certainly scare people or be obnoxious. <laughs> but if you do want to be bold and make a, make a statement, I think that that's, that's a wonderful thing. I think one thing that can be shared to kind of bring that generation gap back into focus, if you have any aunts, any uncles, any parents, any grandparents that had to deal with the latter stages of their life in any kind of hospice, any kind of debilitated disease kind of related situation, that's what you represent, you as a younger generation. And once you're able to start to share that, they understand that there's a reason behind it. I'm trying to do a better job of taking care of you as you progress in your older age, older years. So it's not about me being just all excited about it. There's a reason, there's a cause that it makes sense. So therefore, as soon as you start tapping to that, trust me, that in a generation that hits that 35 and up, things start changing in this body that you used to do in your 20s. <laughs> But if they get a good program going on, they can re-engage in that again. <laughs>